Hello there, Shortcuts. Stephen here. Sorry I'm a day late and getting the videos up compared to normal. I was just knackered last night. Um, but I have two lists. Uh, this list is jazz and soul and blues. Uh, lots of blues. Amazing blues. <laughs> it's a pretty good jazz as well. Um, this will be for Wednesday, uh, May 8th, 9 p.m. The price list will get sent out as always. If you'd like to be on the price list or to see the price list, drop me an email, shortcutsrecordsaus at gmail.com. So I think we should get started. Uh, gosh, I'm looking forward to this one. All right. Now, I am relatively new to enjoying jazz there are some records that i appreciated back in the day but it's really over the last five to ten years that it's become part of my musical lexicon and every so often i find a record that just it just works for me where there's a sweet spot between the jazz purity for me, a bit of funky blues. I, I'm not so hot on free or avant-garde. Um, I, I need to be able to anchor myself around something that I kind of understand. And a playfulness and a virtuosity that just excites me. And there are at least two in this list that um, feet, meet that bar. There's a further element to this, which is a record I can put on where my wife, Melissa, doesn't yell at me, turn that SH1T off. And I'm going to lead off with a record that passes all of those parameters with muster. And it is this. The Natural Soul by Lou Donaldson. Look at that band. Lou Donaldson, obviously, uh, saxophone. Tommy Turrentine on trumpet. Stanley Turrentine's brother. Grant Green on guitar. John Patton on organ. And Ben Dixon on drums. Holy moly. In fact, there's... Uh, yeah. Oh my gosh. Even just the songs, listen to some of the song titles. Funky Mama, Spaceman Twist, Sow Belly Blues, Nice and Greasy. I hope that gives you a sense of how groovy and funky and fun this record is. Um, I, I get this. This is a crack band. I mean, holy God, this band is ridiculous right from the opening track where grant green hits this um kind of guitar motif that they return to the whole way through think of this record as a series of blues based vamps that the band funk up and you get tommy turrentine and lou donaldson soloing over the top in ways that are not about virtuosity but about cool I can't, it just works. And there are, in, in that opening track, Funky Mama, there are blasts, and I mean blasts of organ where Big John Patton is just giving it. And on a couple of occasions, he misses his cue and he pops in when he shouldn't. And I hear this blart and I'm like, oh, that's an error just before the four minute mark. It's so good. I love this album. Please give it a listen if you haven't heard it before. Um, there are some sections where Ben Dixon on drums and Grant Green on guitar just get to do their thing. And in many ways, they're some of my favorite sections of the record. Grant Green is on fire on this album. I love it. The natural, so and look at that sleeve. And this copy is pristine, guys, honestly. It's Beautiful. What a record. The lead-off record. I love it. Please give it a listen. And you know what? 
It might not even be my favorite record on tonight's list. I think my favorite might be this. The Backdoor Wolf by Highland Wolf. Now, Highland Wolf, Chester Watson, maybe along with B.B. King, maybe the most iconic blues man in history. And why is that? Well, to say he grew up in a rough family would be giving that sentence a disservice. Um, he had a tough upbringing. When he was 17 or 18, he was six foot three. He was a big dude. And he had this mountainous voice. And he was picked up by a couple of um, kind of industry veterans and made some great records. I mean, he was productive over the course of four decades, really. He made 40, 40 years of music. So why do I love this one so much? This was his last album, recorded in 1973. A few years after this record, he pretty much was on his deathbed and uh, came to do, went to do a concert. I have a funny feeling it was New York. I can't remember the exact city, but it basically killed him. Six weeks after the concert, he was, he was dead. He had to be revived on the night. <laughs> um, he just wanted to perform. By the time he recorded this record, he was in his 60s. He was on dialysis uh, every three days. His kidneys had failed. He was a sick man. But you would not know. This album is a killer. Um, some autobiographical songs. From what I can tell, I think these are all, you know, contemporary at the time, written. Um, tenor sax, Eddie Shaw. There is one instrumental. And I, I, all, I kind of imagine Howlin' Wolf just having a chill. It's about halfway through the record. There's a really cool instrumental that comes on. I just imagine him just kind of going, all right, this is my time to just gather myself to finish this thing off. Um, Coon on the Moon, which is track number two, is in my top whatever blues songs of all time. It cooks and it's funny. And it's interesting listening to a blues man like Howlin' Wolf where people think of kind of like 40s, 50s and 60s singing about contemporary things. So he t there's a song called Watergate Blues. There's another song about where he references man landing on the moon and hearing those references in amongst the sound, which really doesn't sound... I imagine if he'd recorded this in 1945, 1955, 1965, 1975, it would sound exactly the same. Um, it's really, really fun. And really just, just yeah... Uh, and also, interestingly, I think his voice kind of mellowed uh, as he got a little bit older. It's not quite as confrontational as some of so his voices on some of the early where he really is a force of nature. Um, gosh, i got to get going. I guess a few records ago that I'm raving away. I, look, the blues on this list. Um, John Lee Hooker's Travelin'. Um, 30, just over 30 minutes long. Uh, those, these early 60s records that he, that he did on the VJ label are amongst some of my favorites because I like John Lee Hooker when he plays with a band. And here you have two guitars and not on every song, but on enough for there to be some flavor in the soup. And I really like it. Now, of course, he, Kind of hits his groove. He doesn't like to change chords too often. Um, but there are some baking hot songs. Whiskey and Women um, stands out to me. Dusty Road, the last track. Uh, you know, the record's called Traveling. And it struck me as I was reading some of these, some of these song titles. No Shoes, I Want to Walk, Run On, um, Go On to California, Dusty Road. There is a sense of this being a road record. Um, I love it. It's really, really great. 
Are these VJ represses that were done in the kind of 70s are belting good and in ridiculously good condition. Okay, here is one of my favorite psych soul bands. Maybe the greatest ever psychedelic soul band ever. Norman Whitfield's The Undisputed Truth. This is their third album, Lay of the Land. Law of the Land, my apologies. And it is a white little promo. And really, this album is all about the cover version of Papa Was a Rolling Stone. An absolute stone cold classic tune. Um, there are some, there are, and in fact, nearly all of this record cover versions of somewhat contemporary songs. There's even a cover of With a Little Help from My Friends. Uh, by the Beatles, Killing Me Softly, Roberta Flack, who just had a massive hit. Their version's a little bit different. Just My Imagination, Running Away With Me, Walk On By. So this is like taking the premium psych soul band and creating some soundscapes. I mean, Norman Whitfield is, was, will be forever a genius. I, honestly, he is just amazing. Um, yeah, lovely, cool, fun record on, and, you know, white label promos are pretty, pretty beautiful things. Now, <laughs> I was talking about a beautiful thing. <laughs> this next record tickles me. I'm going to show you the label first, because I love the green and blue of early Atlantic. And some of the artists on this compilation, I'm going to tell you what this is before I show you the sleeve. Merry Christmas, Baby, Otis Redding, Presents for Christmas, Solomon Burke, Jingle Bells, Booker T and the MGs, Every Day Will Be Like a Holiday, William Bell, What Are You Doing New Year's Eve, King Curtis. <laughs> That's so great. A Clarence Carter, Joe Tex. Carla Thomas, some of the greatest stacks and um, Atlantic soul records, soul singers of the age. And they made a Christmas record. Now these soul Christmas records, you know, they're a little bit of a fascination of mine. I hadn't seen this one. Um, managed to get two copies of it whilst I was in Japan. Um, you would not know that this was a Christmas album from the sleeve. Have a look at that. Not only is that unchristmassy, it is one of the most disturbing album sleeves I have ever seen. Even on the back, look, what were they thinking? Um, <laughs> the inside is a little bit less palatable or a little bit more palatable, but this, I think, I mean, it's it's gotta be uh, early to mid sixties. I don't know the exact date for this release, but what a compilation. What a sleeve. <laughs> Forgive me by, by being tickled at that, but I, yeah. Um, sounds wonderful as well. All right, we've got a couple more jazz records. Quite different to the Lou Donaldson that we've described. Albeit um, equal, equally as kind of stunning in, in sound. This is Lifetime by Anthony Williams, who became Tony Williams. This is an early uh, Blue Note record that he did um, with Sam Rivers on tenor sax, Bobby Hutcherson on vibes and marimba, Herbie Hancock on piano, Richard Davis on bass, Gary Peacock on bass. There's uh, two different bass players for the two sides, Anthony Williams on drums. So Anthony Williams, of course, went on to be to be the drummer for what's called Miles Davis's second great quintet. You 100% heard this guy play. Um but these were when these were kind of records when he was kind of laying down his own style and um it's not as 
uh, accessible as Lou Donaldson, but it is as fun and creative and wild. What a drummer he is. Oh my gosh. Belting. Um, you know, you've got, and even just on the sleeve, you see the, the things called two pieces of one. You've just got a stellar band wrapping themselves around a new and exciting talent. And you can hear the joy in the room, which I always like. And it's always kind of, you know, nailed that. Those sessions that Rudy Van Gelder ran where he had some of the greatest musicians of all time in the room, you can tell that he's just kind of, he's just like opening it out and saying, do your thing. Um, yeah, brilliant. All right, only a few to go, but man, I love these as well. Um, we talked about Highland Wolf recording great music toward the end of his life. Similarly, Billy Holiday, songs for Distingue lovers. Um, there's a member of this group who uh, gave me this record. I didn't know it, and I got gifted it, uh, a US copy. This is a Japanese copy. Um, we've talked a lot on this video about what it means to have a band around a singular talent. And if that band complements and finds ways to add color and depth, it can just elevate. And this is the case here. The band who play on this record are amazing. Um, there's piano, bass, drums. It's just, I don't know. I think that, I, I, I think this may well be, I, yeah, it may well be her best record. Definitely worth a listen. Um, for those of you who, who love this type of stuff. Um, it's, it's a delight. And it's on the Verve, the Black Verve label. I'm trying desperately to remember who's in the band because I, I remember reading about it a while back, but it's not popping into my mind. It is what it is. Um, but a beautiful thing. All right. <laughs> singular talents and definitely influenced by Harlan Wolf was Dr. John his fifth album being the monolith that is gumbo look at that gatefold uh, in 2003 Rolling Stone voted gumbo the 404th best album of all time made their list of the 500 greatest albums of all time and um, Yoda's yum, Yummy Hot Hamburgers and Hot Dogs. Why is that? Well, it's because this is a celebration of New Orleans funk and soul that was never really surpassed. It's just a classic, stone cold classic. The Japanese pressing is wonderful. Now, this is something a bit different. This is a US pressing of Sonny Boy Williamson's The Real Folk Blues. Now, Chess and um, the kind of their associated labels had Sonny Boy Williamson and others making great singles in the 50s and 60s. And they would compile these singles into killer compilation albums. And this is one of them. Sonny Boy Williamson's The Real Folk Blues. Um, gotta Move, Checking Up On My Baby... Too Young to Die. That's <laughs> classic, classic blues title. Down Child, Dissatisfied, Too Old to Think. Um, yeah, lovely, lovely, lovely thing. And this is a US pressing that sounds pretty bloody awesome on my system. Um, Sonny Boy Williamson's The Real Folk Blues. I have one more blues album and then I want to close out on a soul record because we've got a we've had a lot of testosterone in this list, and I'm going to leaven things out with uh, with someone who's pretty great, Freddie King's Burglar. Um, 
This is the Australian first press in immaculate condition. Freddie King, great singer, great guitarist, who really came to prominence pretty late in life. Um, but albums like Burglar, um, Texas Cannonball, etc., they're fantastic. And this is a beautiful, beautiful little copy of this. Again, put this on, give it a listen, listen to the first couple of tunes. <laughs> I think that, uh, I think a lot of people fell in love with Freddie King because of this record. Often considered to be his best, and that is saying something. I'm gonna finish with someone who went on to be a disco diva, but early in her career, recorded two Southern Soul classics. Now, I was at the record fair on Newtown on Sunday, and um, one, of the, one of the people who came along came and said to me, I love soul, 70s soul, give me a recommendation. And I was thinking Ann Peebles, of course, or um, Millie Jackson, who you all know how much I love. Um, but I could equally have added into the equation Lolata Holloway. Cry to Me is the one of the most pristine Southern Soul early 70s classic records. Has now been redone so many times. In fact, there was a Record Store Day repress relatively recently. Um, but these early... Uh, Japanese presses are really, really great. Again, look at that back sleeve. Look at that. Um, shortly after this, as I said, she went the way of the Disco Diva, but not on this record. Um, sweaty, horn-driven, great guitar as well. Um, highly, highly recommended. So there you have soul, jazz, and a lot of phenomenal blues in the list tonight. Sonny Boy Williamson, Freddie King, John Lee Hooker, and The Howlin' Wolf. What about that? <laughs> and then one of the most bizarre soul sleeves, but a great compilation, Lolata Holloway. What else did we have? Dr. John, and some jazz from Tony Williams, and the magnificent the Natural Soul by Lou Donaldson. I hope you find something to explore and enjoy. If you're interested in seeing the price list that comes out 9 p.m. Wednesday evening, there you have it. All right. Thanks a lot.